Hello, Monsters Abound here. Earlier this month I was invited to Creative Assembly to get all handsy with Three Kingdoms. I can only assume there was a mix-up. They did call me David on the email, which is not my name, but I thought maybe it was all top secret and I was supposed to be undercover. This theory gained traction when I realised I was being followed by a rather large gentleman with some terrible dental issue during the journey. Long story short, ended up having a bare-knuckle fist flight on top of the Thameslink train to Horsham. Of course I won, mostly due to me being in the fetal position crying while he was busy putting the boot in, which led to him not paying attention for low-hanging signals. The name mix-up turned out to be an honest mistake, which does make the whole fight for survival a bit of a mystery, but I don't travel via trains that much, so maybe this sort of thing just happens when you don't travel first class, or maybe it's a Horsham thing. Despite all that, I got to play Three Kingdoms! I was excited for Three Kingdoms, but not as much as I had been for, say, Warhammer or Warhammer 2. That has changed. I am now very excited for Three Kingdoms. In fact, I would go so far as to say that I'm looking forward to Three Kingdoms more now than I am for Warhammer 3, and I never thought I'd say that. Of course, that might change as soon as someone shows me some Chaos Doors, but it's literally anyone's game for my attention at this point. So we're currently gliding over the campaign map and it looks gorgeous. It looks like they picked up a lot of ideas from doing the Warhammer games, which makes it look a bit fantastical, but certainly far more visually interesting. We only got to see this clip, not actually play with the campaign map itself, but we were told that there is a day-night cycle that takes place across turns, which throws up a lot of interesting possibilities. In fact, the battle we got to play, an ambush, was set at night. So we got to play this ambush battle as the Soon family, who are the children of Soon Jian, one of the three warlords of the Three Kingdoms, part of the Three Kingdoms period, and one of the 11 playable factions that will be available at launch. We had two of the Soon family in the battle, Soon Ren, who is the feisty daughter of Soon Jian, armed with sword and bow, and with two powerful abilities which allow her to snipe from long range, and also do a damaging AoE attack in melee. She immediately found her way into my heart, as well as that of multiple enemy combatants via their rib cages. She's very much the girl you'd bring back to meet your mother if you wanted your mother and the rest of your family dead. She has a couple of abilities that she can use. The first is Flames of the Phoenix, an AoE melee attack, which does considerable damage. Second is Heart Seeker, which is a bit like Amber Spear and does damage in a line. It was suggested to us we should use it against enemy characters. It can miss, and in fact, someone at the event managed to kill both Sun Xuan and the enemy character he was dueling with the same Heart Seeker. She also has three more passive abilities, which both she and Sun Xuan have in common. Nature's Ally, a buff that increases speed and ignores forest penalties. Close Relative, which increases her morale and armor, and I would assume this ability is in common with any character fighting alongside a family member. And finally, Fallen Relative, which significantly increases the character's stats for three minutes after a family member has fallen in battle. Sun Chuan is her rather more cerebral brother, a commander who is not as handy in a fight, but far less likely to attempt to break a man in half with his bare hands. He also has an amazing taste in a range of sensual silk robes, a man after my own heart. Not just a fashion icon, he has his own abilities, which are a bit more defensive in nature. Stone Bulwark, which increases charge and melee defense, good for receiving a nasty cavalry charge. And Unyielding Earth, which increases the morale and missile resistance of a unit. The two are leading their army, which is made up of two units of mercenary cavalry, which are medium shock cav, two units of mercenary infantry, which are medium sword infantry, two units of protectors of heaven, which are heavy spear infantry, and two units of azure dragons, heavy hybrid spear and missile infantry. I was a bit worried that Warhammer had spoiled me in the unit diversity stakes, but I didn't feel that way here. The units looked absolutely stunning and different to use. That could be because this was the first time I've played the game and I haven't really had that many units on hand to try out. Without further ado, let's head into the battle. It is quiet here, brother. Too quiet for my tastes. Something feels... wrong. Shh! There! Movement in the tree line! An ambush is imminent. We must be ready. If we cross the river, we could escape through the southern gates. Or we could attempt to survive the ambush through force of arms. This hill would make a good defensive position en route, should more forces arrive. Prepare for battle, brother. And may your blade strike true! 
We are going to pull our units back to the tree line, while Soon Ren leaves the cavalry around behind the enemy to deal with those archers. You can see some of the trees are on fire already. They've got this lovely smoke effect, lovely fire, and you can see all the lighting looks absolutely gorgeous. Taking place at night did mean we missed out on the really vibrant, stunning colours we've seen in the other battle, uh, but the battlefield was beautifully moody and gloomy. The battle opened with Soon Ren exclaiming that she thinks something is up and that she can spot movement in the trees. Now, we were told that the lanterns floating in the sky with a signal for the ambush to begin and considering how bloody many of the things there were you'd think that would have been the first clue but I guess you don't really need to be particularly on the ball when you can pull a man's spine out through his left nostril Soon Red's going in now I was going to try and duel this this commander peon but I can't and I don't entirely know why I can't duel him he was pretty easy to kill anyway, so I didn't really need to duel him. I did use Sun Ren's Heart Seeker ability on him once, and uh, he basically died in one shot, so he's not so he's not particularly resilient. Our options are to make for the pass and escape or murder everyone. Apparently, the option to escape an ambush battle is common. Any ambush battle you are taking part in always has the option to actually flee rather than fight your way out. Obviously, being a Total War vet, I immediately decided that killing everyone was the only true victory. You know who makes fighting retreats? Survivors. And what's another word for a survivor? That's right. Cowards. You either kill everyone or die in the attempt. As it happens, a lot of my people died in the multiple attempts. See if we can deal with them. Cavalry, can't, having dealt with the archers, now coming back to help out with the infantry. I also really love the music. I know I love the music because I ended up humming it in Morrison's. Now formations, there's lots of formations. You can see you've got uh, the, the wedge formation and the diamond formation and that gives a lovely little charge there right into the rear of the infantry. The melee combat felt slower than Warhammer. However, the charges still felt very impactful. If you got a good cavalry charge off on the rear of an enemy unit, they took a lot of damage. So with the enemy units breaking, we're going to roll up their line. And get a good little close up of the fighting. Looks so good. Gonna move the Azure Dragons up to assist, and we have completely destroyed the first lot of ambushing units. There are more. Now, the first time I played this battle, uh, I didn't notice the reinforcements coming from the rear in until they charged me in the back so that 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 first attempt didn't go very well however i think this is my fourth attempt so uh, by now i've kind of got the handle of it but obviously i'm trying to show as much of of how the game looks as possible while also trying to win the battle so we're going to wade across the river here and we're going to have a quick look at the remnants of battle i love this the little little banners fluttering in the breeze there looks really nice and we've got reinforcements approaching from the pass now, which we're trying to escape to. So we've got to break through them if we want to escape. Obviously, we're not going to escape. We're going to kill everyone. And there's Zhang Liao, I think I've said his name right. I don't know if that's the Zhang Liao, but we're going to fill him full of arrows, basically. So we've got Sun Ren. You can see a lot of damage there, very, very nice, and a little bit of smack talk as well, which I absolutely loved. I think this is why Soon Ren became my favourite, because she's just, she smack talks so well. So we're going to get a, another Heart Seeker in just to chip away at his health, give us the best chance of defeating him in a duel. That army's getting a little bit close, so we're going to pull Soon Ren back to our line. Uh, then we're going to engage him in a duel. You can see the life slash death to the duel, which means this duel will be to the death, and soon Ren immediately gets knocked off a horse. Duels look visually very impressive and provide buffs to your hero and the army should they win, as well as obviously removing the pesky enemy hero from the battle, but should not be entered into willy-nilly. 
jewels can end up with your character dying for good. No comeback sees the developers said they had had multiple conversations about this, but ultimately came to the decision that it was important that you could tell your own story. And if that means your faction leader buying the farm, then so be it. Jewels do not always mean a character's death, and it depends on how they feel about the other character. You can see the outcome of a duel when you bring up the tooltip, and you can decline a duel you don't want, and even interrupt an ongoing duel if you don't like how it's going, although that provides a decrease to the morale of your army. But considering that the alternative might be your character's death, it might be the best option to save their life. And this is an effect on duels. If characters dueling like each other, they are far more likely to let their opponent live should they beat them. Whereas if they are enemies, they will be more likely to fight to death. As you can see, I'm doing a very poor job of managing my cavalry here, mostly because I'm trying to sort of get a good, good view of the duel. It's very difficult to get a good view of the duel and control your army at the same time. You can see Soon Ren is actually struggling quite a bit there. I don't know quite know why, uh, but we are going to... We're going to use uh, Flames of the Phoenix to finish him off. And there we go. And more smack talk from Soon Ren. She's, she's the best. I'll level with you. This is probably not the most controlled of all the battles I fought. However, it is the only one I actually did win. Now we can see there is another enemy general there. Now I did consider dueling him. I was going to try and use a heart seeker. But it kind of just ends up killing, I think, mostly my own people. And then I decide, I mean, I could duel him, but I could just, you know... Double team him. Brother and sister. Smacking him around. There we go. Fantastic stuff. They're going to just deal with him by... Not even in a duel. Just just jump him. Both of them. Characters could move very, very quickly. They could also just plough through their own and enemy troops. They didn't get bogged down like uh, Warhammer characters did. They were it, Sometimes it looked a little bit ridiculous as they sort of like just ran through the sort of horde, the blobs, without without stopping. Sooner in there, just carving her way through enemy troops. She's having a no way another time. And one of the more interesting things we were told was about character loyalty. We already know about the character relationship system in Three Kingdoms, which acts a bit like EastEnders with a multitude of characters, all with their own web of relationships with everyone else who they might like, dislike, whatever. Lord's loyalty is fluid, and Lords can be recruited or may leave your faction for another, which brings up the exciting prospect of what happens if you sign a character up, but they're not entirely above board. You and your opponents can send characters to be spies in another faction. We didn't get to see this in action, but from what we were told, it sounds brilliant. Apparently only some characters are willing to spy for you. They can be sent back into the character pool and be recruited by another faction. They then provide intel for you and can perform actions to undermine that faction. Spies will have the individual level of cover, and you will have an overall spy network for each individual faction. Each time a spy does something naughty, there's a chance of being caught. I believe they said you don't know how much doing something will cost cover-wise, so that's how your spy gets caught if it spends more cover than it has available. You can obviously end up fighting your spy in battle, but they will spare you in a duel if you end up in a fight, and I assume vice versa. Is this the case for all characters? If your spy doesn't like someone in your faction, will they kill them or spare them? Does it make more obvious who the spy might be? All questions I've literally just thought of. I cannot fight the enemy alone! God, I love Soon Ren. That is very much the spy obvious. system is done through its own UI, from what we're aware of, we didn't see it, but it sounds brilliant. If they can pull this off, it will be fantastic and add a whole new layer to the game. Another example we were told about was that if a character is a spy and gets adopted into the family of the faction, then they could potentially become the faction leader, in which case you can imagine the chaos they could cause, up to and including a civil war, as they attempt to merge the faction with yours and the loyalist forces rebel. 
It sounds like they've been working hard on the character system and so far it sounds intriguing. I really want it to work as well as I hope it will. Uh, I'd love to see more detailed character interactions. It also seems like it will play a key part in not just the campaign map but the battles too. So far my opinion of the game is incredibly favourable with the caveat that I've not actually seen very much of it. So everything we've heard and everything I've seen looks absolutely fantastic and I am legitimately very eager for the game to come out. And with that said, it's just to say thank you for CA for inviting me to get handsy with Three Kingdoms and thank you very much for watching.